Chapter 8, Fungi, edited and reviewed by Peter McCoy. Before there were animals, before there were trees, before there were plants, there were fungi, the first eukaryotes. It has been argued that the first plant cell formed when an early fungus incorporated a photosynthesizing cyanobacteria into its cells. Lichens, a mutualistic relationship between fungi and algae, were first to venture onto the shores of the early terrestrial earth. At one point in the development of life on land, fungi dominated, with some fungi being as tall as buildings. Their actions and decomposition created the first soils for animals and plants to flourish thereafter. Fungi are also intrinsically part of all animal and plant physiology, often making their categorization difficult. Fungi are the primary decomposers, redistributors of nutrients, and ecological catalysts that guide and support plant and animal development in all biomes. They are found in the air, water, soils, and likely in the tissues of all plants and animals. They are found on all continents and even at the bottom of the ocean. Lichens can even survive the vacuum of outer space and successfully reanimate when returned to a suitable environment. All this evidence has led some to hypothesize a fungal genesis for all life on Earth. Fungi also exhibit unique abilities and qualities that complicate or even defy much of our established understanding of many branches of science. Fungi alone can break down wood lignin, a development that came only after a long period of tree wood lignin piling up. They also can dissolve rock itself. Geomycology is the study of rock weathering by fungi. Phosphorus is unlocked by fungi when decomposing organic matter, as well as from rock and soil particles. Different strains of fungi can be adapted to feed on crude oil or even to grow in radioactive soils. With that said, change has to be incremental for the organism to tolerate it. Fungi are powerful but still sensitive. Lightning is associated with fungal flushes in nature especially in relation to desert truffles. Commercial mushroom growing operations in Asia are now discovering that shocking the mycelium with high voltage electricity can also stimulate larger mushroom flushes. Fungi force those who study them to holistically reframe their understanding of the world. They are the managers of all natural systems and the facilitators of life itself. These characteristics place fungi at the very center of all natural systems. Fungi are working everywhere in helpful and sometimes surprising ways. We can increase fungal cycles, harvest the abundance of these cycles, and in turn, remediate toxins in our environments and bodies with this abundance. Research into fungi is still in its infancy, with mycology as a field of study largely ignored by American and European academia until rather recently. However, a large grassroots movement combined with the advent of the internet has led to a revolution in cultivation practices for home-scale growers and researchers. The phyla. The queendom of fungi, as coined by radical mycology's Peter McCoy, is vast and so diverse that it is impossible to categorize it with our current methods. The reproduction processes and life cycles of fungi differ dramatically across the fungal phyla and even between species within a given phylum. When we compare fungal genetics, things get even more interesting. When speaking of growing mushrooms, we are usually referring to species in the Basidiomycota excepting truffles and morels. Bicidiomycotin mushrooms start out as singular spores that travel alone and inoculate a substrate, their growing medium, where they begin to form mycelium, a monokaryotic network of hyphae that are comprised of strands of fungal tissue that are one cell thick. These hyphae grow and branch through their substrate, seeking food, water, and a mate. Once they find a compatible mate, the two networks will fuse together and combine their genetic material, 
forming an extended dikaryotic state, wherein two nuclei are contained in one organism. Extended dikaryotic states are unique to fungi. Other fungi in the group known as glomeromycota, aka arbuscular mycorrhizae or AM fungi, can contain 800 to 35,000 different nuclei in their spores. These nuclei can be from divergently different fungi, making glomeromycota and fungi difficult to categorize due to our inability to know which nuclei influence the fungus's growth. Once the substrate has been completely consumed by a basidiomycotin fungus, this is done by releasing digestive enzymes from the tips of the hyphae, the fungus growth will become restricted, causing it to create a hyphal knot that will swell into a primordia and eventually into the mature fruit body, or mushroom. Inside the mushroom, meiosis and mitosis occur, creating new nuclei which are taken up by the mushroom's spores. Using condensation, the mushroom spores collect moisture and use this weight of water to induce an explosion into the air at astonishing speeds of one meter per second. This explosion process is thought to be why mushrooms are cooler in temperature than that of the surrounding forest. Every breath and gust of wind has spores in it. The substrates commonly used in commercial mushroom production include wood, grains, manure, and other agricultural or urban wastes. The different growing mediums represent different ratios of carbon to nitrogen. Fungi digest complex carbohydrates and organic polymers like cellulose and wood lignin. Fungi can digest leafy mulch, use cigarette filters, various types of manure, old pairs of jeans, cardboard, paper, and even coffee grounds too but most prefer a specific diet. In all instances, the mushrooms are grown on the wastes that we don't know what else to do with. Mushroom cultivation provides an abundance of food, medicine, soil, and more, all while reducing our pollutant loads and helping to more efficiently close loops in human systems. Mushrooms don't develop well without proper food. They need a balanced diet that includes plenty of carbon, such as wood, as well as nitrogen from things like soybean husks, wheat bran, or manure, and sometimes more specific ingredients. Mushrooms are like the fruit of a tree in that they contain the means for reproduction. Their seeds, in this case, are spores that are released in a fantastic burst as the caps flare outward and are carried away on the wind. The mycelium is like the tree's roots, trunk, branches, and leaves. Glomeromycota are among the oldest types of fungi on Earth. They are found in soils across the globe and do not form mushrooms. Their life cycle is quite different from that of basidiomycotin fungi. Glomeromycotin species dwell in the soil around and inside the roots of plants. That is, they form endomycorrhizae mutualistically beneficial relationships similar to that formed between rhizobia bacteria and legume roots discussed in the prior chapter. With these fungi, the structure formed is known as a mycorrhiza. Glomeromycotin species are often referred to as arbuscular mycorrhizae fungi, AM fungi or AMF, and form this relationship with at least 90% of all plants. This relationship is formed when a spore germinates near a root sending out specific exudates that beckon the fungi to extend its hyphae into the plant root. The hyphae form tree or arbor-like structures that penetrate the plant's cell walls from within the root, creating a direct link between the mycelium outside the roots and the cells of the plant inside the roots. As with the rhizobia bacteria, the plant provides sugars in exchange for nutrients and water. AM fungi magnify the efficacy of roots as well as their reach and surface area. The life cycle of AM fungi is an ephemeral process that cannot be seen from an above ground perspective. The arbuscules form in a matter of days and only last 4 to 15 days, though what is produced in that time period can last decades. Discovered in 1996, glomalin is a sticky protein exclusively produced by the mycelium of AM fungi. 
it significantly contributes to soil structure and sequesters nearly a third of all soil carbon. As much as a third of all soil carbon is sunk by mycorrhizal fungi as both glomalin and fungal tissue, mycelium. Most of this sinking is done by AM fungi. Glomalin is the sticky, carbonaceous material that holds the soils together and gives it the fluffy, loam texture that is sought after by all farmers and gardeners everywhere. With such important influences on the soil environment, whole plant communities, and animal diversity of an ecosystem, the glomeromycota may be the most ecologically significant of all fungal phyla. Peter McCoy, Radical Mycology, 2016. The ascomycota, one of the other seven fungal phyla, includes a wide array of fungal forms. Yeasts, mildews, lichens, morel mushrooms, underground truffles, and other complex fruit bodies. Alcohol, cheese, bread, and antibiotics are all made with ascomycotin fungi. When reproducing, the compatible mycelium of compatible ascomycotin fungi do not initially fuse together, as with basidiomycotin fungi. Rather, they meet and cohabitate in their substrate, only fusing right before the fruit body is formed. Ascomycotin fungi and many other types of fungi can also reproduce asexually meaning they can self-clone without a separate genetic partner. Depending on various environmental conditions, these fungi will switch from asexual to sexual reproduction modes. The other four phyla, the Chytridomycota, Neocalamastigomycota, Blastocladiomycota, and Microsporidia represent single-celled microscopic fungi. There is even a group of uncategorized fungi called zygomycota that has yet to be officially categorized. The science of mycology is still quite young, with fascinating new discoveries constantly arising. Part of the confusion in this field of study rests with the fact that in terms of genetics and appearance, fungi defy reduction and categorization. For these reasons and more, Mycology is one of the best natural sciences for exploration. With so much to be discovered, anyone can add to our understanding of the importance of fungi in the world. Mycorrhiza. There are seven types of mycorrhizal fungi, which are fungi that associate with plant roots. The most common are the arbuscular mycorrhizae fungi, AMF. AM fungi augment the root structures physically increasing surface area by up to 10,000 times to greatly increase the plant's nutrient absorption. Fungi can make nutrients available to the plant that would otherwise be completely unavailable. AMF are some of the only fungi that can perform the energy demanding processes of reducing nitrate into a form of nitrogen that can be metabolized. Peter McCoy, Radical Mycology, 2016. Mycorrhizal fungi either penetrate the root cell walls or sheathe the root cells in various ways to exchange nutrients easily with the plant. Endomycorrhizal fungi penetrate the cell walls of the plant root cells while ectomycorrhizal fungi do not. Rather, they usually just surround the cells within a root. There are even endoectomycorrhizae fungi that form both structures. Many plants form various mycorrhizal associations that can change over their lifespan, and some plants, like orchids, are entirely reliant on mycorrhizal fungi for their survival for at least part of their lifespan. These mutualistic relationships are the ecological foundations of our forests, grasslands, wetlands, and even aquatic habitats. Incredibly, at times this mutualistic relationship even can appear altruistic as the fungi may not receive any perceived benefit for all that they do for a particular habitat or plant. Plants would not cover the earth if it were not for fungi, but fungi do not control plants. Plants maintain autonomy and use their exudates and perhaps bioelectrical signals to communicate with fungi. The nutrient exchanges between these organisms range in content from sugars to carbon to nitrogen to phosphorus, but many are surprising in their behavior, at times exhibiting complete role and dependency reversals. Lichens, fungi plus algae. 
Lichens are an incredible ecosystem of mutualism where algae, a plant, and or cyanobacteria, a microbe, work in symbiosis with fungi to exchange nutrients and gases in a shared microbiome adapted to niche climates and environments. The photosynthesizing partner, the photobiont, lives in what is essentially a protective greenhouse that the fungus constructs with its mycelium. Lichens are found nearly everywhere and in all climates, though air pollution sharply reduces their populations. They can grow as biocrusts in deserts, locking soils together to protect them and raising organic matter levels. Lichens can fix nitrogen where it is scarce. In the cold temperate climates where nitrogen fixing plants and trees like alder or redbud are sparsely distributed, lichen decomposition can account for 50% of the nitrogen input in soils though lichens can fix nitrogen both near and far from the equator. In deserts, lichens are often the main source of nitrogen. Lichens are often overlooked as both a form of fungus and as a nitrogen fixer, but they are critical to the vast majority of habitats. Spore prints. Spore prints are one of the only ways to be sure of a mushroom's identity. To collect a spore print, harvest the mushroom in question before it has released all of its spores. Usually, this is before the cap is fully flared out. This is done either using white and black bicolored paper, glass, or tinfoil to make prints. Spores can range in color from dark to white, so those surfaces allow you to better see the complete print. Make a hole for the stem of the mushroom to pass through the paper or tinfoil so that the cap's gills rest evenly on the surface or discard the stem and put the cap directly on the surface. Place the mushroom and paper or tin in a place free from breezes. Spores are easily blown by the wind and allow 12 to 24 hours for the mushroom to release its spores. Or just cover the mushroom with a large bowl to protect it from the breeze. Once you have a spore print, you can compare its color to descriptions or pictures in a mushroom hunting field guide. Often, the combination of the mushroom's spore color, habitat, and the visible features are all you need to know which species it is. This can be subjective at times, and even confusing, as some guides are better at describing mushrooms than others. It is always best to source local mushroom mentors for guidance on identifying wild mushrooms found in your area. Products. CO2 is created as fungi digest a substrate. The fungus consumes oxygen and releases carbon dioxide, just like an animal. When growing fungi indoors, it is important to have enough indoor plants, ventilation, and space in your growing area. Heat is created as the fungus' digestive enzymes work, so be sure to provide enough airflow and space. Otherwise, the mycelium may overheat or go anaerobic and become moldy. Fungi need water to be present in the soil or substrate to perform their life cycle as they are constantly taking in water as they extend their hyphae. After a mushroom stops producing flushes, the final product is exhausted substrate that is ready to be composted. That is, it's spent in terms of nutritional value for the fungi and can now be digested by red wiggler worms and then used in the garden. Compared to the estimated 7 billion metric tons of CO2 annually released through human activities, fungal decomposition dwarfs that figure with 85 billion metric tons of CO2 released annually. That accounts for nearly the entire 87 billion metric tons required annually by Earth's plants. Animals relieve the final 2 billion metric tons through respiration. Though man-made CO2 emissions, which are causing climate change, are by no means insignificant, they are manageable when seen from this perspective. This is especially true when we consider how much room there is in the soil for sequestration. Fungi sequester approximately a third of all carbon in global soils and are responsible for 40 to 70% of the carbon found in specific soils. Mycorrhizal fungi, specifically AMF, are a critical tool in carbon sequestration efforts worldwide. Fungi as food. The most obvious food sources in the fungal queendom are mushrooms, but they are far from being the only fungal products we eat. Alcohol and bread, which are consumed all over the world, are both made of yeast. 
Yeasts are fungi. Sourdough bread and wine are both examples of ancient fungal foods that many people still consume today. Tempeh is made by growing a mold on soybeans or other legumes, and many probiotic foods and drinks are combinations of both beneficial bacteria and fungi, like water kefir. Spent growing medium, a byproduct of mushroom cultivation, can be used as livestock feed. And mushrooms can be grown on all paper and cardboard waste indefinitely and consumed if toxin-free materials are used.